Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to the second week of Obsidian October. I'm glad to have you all here. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. I'm looking at the comment section. Hi, everyone. So this is live. Uh, if you have any questions during this event, I will be able to see them. So if something is not clear or you want me to repeat something, feel free to ask in the chat and hopefully I will see it. Uh, if not, just wait a little bit and uh, I'll get right back to you. So I hope that you've started to familiarize yourself with plugin development for Obsidian. Uh, maybe you're well on your way and if so, that's awesome. Uh, and if you didn't tune in last week, we looked at how you could get started with building a plugin using a official sample plugin. And, but our plugin didn't do much. It's basically an empty plugin. Uh, we saw a few, uh, few pop-ups uh, with some text, but nothing more than that. So this time I will, uh, learn, I will, I will show you how to do a little bit more. And uh, most likely, you know, you want to be able to let the user interact with your plugin in some way, right? If it's to start something, start a command, maybe you want to, them to uh, do something in the editor, something that is initiated by the user. So feel free to stay tuned. We will be having a short break uh, between. Um, so where you will get a chance to stretch your legs, uh, fill up on your favorite beverage and get right back. I hope that you're as excited as I am. So let's get started, shall we? So let's bring up where we left off last time. So let's do it like that. So here I have with me uh, a code editor on the left and I have my Obsidian Vault here on the right. So this is kind of where we left off last time, where we have a very, very minimal uh, plugin where we can do things like uh, we can add a notice that says, hello. Uh, and you can see that it reloads as soon as I make a change. And the reason it does that is because I am constantly rebuilding my files. You can see that in, in the terminal below. And I have a plugin called Hot Reload, which listens to those changes to my plugin and automatically restarts my plugin. So this gives me a really nice wor uh, workflow for working with plugins. So what kind of capabilities, capabilities do we have for accepting user inputs? Well, there's quite a few. And the common denominator for them is that you all configure them in this onload function. And so that's what we will be doing. And the first thing that we will be looking at is what's called a ribbon action. So the ribbon is this side menu that you see here on the left side of Obsidian. So you can see right here, we have, uh, we can insert templates. We basically have a set of buttons here and we would like to add another one so that uh, we can let the user trigger our plugin. And so since this is a spooky plugin in time for Halloween, uh, I'm gonna scare the user. So just a, a, a little boo there. There, wonderful. So this is now a notice. It tells me something when I load the plugin, but I want to trigger it using what's called a ribbon action. So the way I do that is that I, I register commands and, and other features and capabilities inside this onload function here. And I do that using this and then a dot. And here, if you're using the Visual Studio Code, you can see uh, what things I can add here. So you can see that you have things like commands, setting bars, status bar, items, and so on. But in this case, I want to add a ribbon icon. So I select that. And that's going to take a few parameters. Uh, what the one, one being an icon. So what icons are available? Uh, well, turns out you can go and check that out uh, if we open a, a browser. Uh, let's see if we find one. So uh, let's see if we can start a browser here. There it is. So uh, so Obsidian is using a, a library called Lucid. So let's go there. So at this website, lucid.dev, 
uh, you can see all the available icons here. So for example, I want something you know, like an eye. And you see that I have plenty of options to do there, like files and folders. You can anything you can imagine. So you can see the the ID of the icon right here. So in this case, I want to uh, create an action that's called peek into the dark, because that's what you do uh, during Halloween. It's dark constantly, especially here in Sweden. So I'm going to use the I for that. I think that's pretty appropriate. I'm going to put an I as the first parameter. And I'm going to set a title, uh, which is going to be there when you hover the, the icon. So it's going to be peek into the dark. Very exciting. And then the last one is a callback uh, where I can do the action. So in this case, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say boo. And you see now that nothing happened when I reloaded it, but now I have an additional icon here in the in the side menu. So if I click that, now you, you get spooked, right? Which is awesome. So ribbon icons is a, a great way to start. This is uh, if you just want to quickly uh, start your, your, your thing, whether it's syncing something or if you want to insert something in the editor or what you might want to do, Ribbon Actions is a great, great place to start. Uh, also, they're, they're, they're very minimal. Uh, you basically have a button which has a callback. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is called commands. And commands is a very central part of Obsidian, and you've probably used quite a few of them. And so what we're going to do here is that we, we're going to add a command. And let me just first show you what a command looks like. So if I go back to Obsidian here, and I hit, um, in my case, I'm on a Mac, so I hit Command P. And here I find a list of all the, the different commands that I have available. So these two are, are a little bit different. Uh, so one major difference is that uh, commands you can attach hotkeys to. So you can uh, let users um, bind a, uh, a keyboard shortcut to your command, which is kind of nice. Um, and so what else do we have? Well, the, the, the command uh, is actually more versatile than that because so if you're going to be peeking into the dark, it needs to be dark. So that means that you can't really look into the dark un until a certain time of the day, right? During the night. So what we can do is that we can do what's called a conditional command, which uh, is only available uh, during a certain condition, whether a, condi a condition is met. And the only thing we need to do is that we change this callback to a check callback. And what does that do? Well, first of all, it it's, accepts a, a parameter, uh, it's called checking. So the interesting thing about this checking parameter is that it, uh, it actually executes twice. So this callback is gonna run twice. The first time it's gonna run uh, with checking set to true. And which means that the, the, the function is, is, uh, needs to you know, check whether it's able to run the command. And then following up that with a checking set to false where you actually run the command. So it kind of gives you a, a preliminary check before we can, we can do it. So uh, what can we do then? Well, let's see what we have. So I kind of want to um, know if it's past dark, you know? And in this case, I'm just going to check uh, what are the, the, the current hour of the day, uh, which I can get from the, the current, current time and the hour. And I'm going to check whether that is, um, I don't know, um, bigger than uh, 20, 23, maybe. So this is 11 PM. Uh, after that, it gets dark. And we want to check first if it is past dark, and we want to return true, right? Uh, and otherwise, we want to return false. And what we want to do now is that this will be run twice now. 
And what we want to do is that we look at this checking uh, parameter to see if I can actually, uh, uh, if this is a check mode or if the, it's the actual action mode, so to say. So what I can do now is that if I check whether it's not a checking mode, then I want to actually run my command, my action. So let's see if I do the same thing here, call the boo one. Um, and if not, uh, either way, I'm going to return true. So whether or not it's in checking mode, I'm going to return true. Um, and if it's not in the past, then uh, past arc, then I'm just going to return false. So this kind of gives you a chance to, uh, for another plugin, it could be that if you haven't configured credentials, you won't be able to query your APIs or something like that. So let's see now uh, if I can run this command. So as you see now, it's not showing up. Uh, it's because it's not past 11 PM where I'm at. But the thing is, uh, I live in Sweden, very close to the polar circle. It gets dark. It is very much pitch black uh, here right now. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 19, because we're going to be scaring people at 7 PM here. So let's see if that works. Yes, now it shows up, uh, which is great. So now we have a conditional command that only runs past dark. So uh, that's that's a conditional check uh, callback or a conditional command. So these are very versatile. If you have uh, you know certain conditions that need to be met before you um, before you run the actual uh, command. You also have a, some called an, uh, something called an editor callback. Um, and this is a callback that can only run in the editor. So in a way, it's, it's kind of like a check callback uh, in the sense that it will automa automatically check that whether you are in the editor or not. Very cool. Uh, so what have we here? What have we here? So I actually want to use a edit callback here. Um, I'm going to create an, another command here, actually. Um, so I'm going to copy this and start a new command down here. So uh, what do I want to do here? Well, for Halloween, I want to uh, start decorating stuff. And I love pumpkins for Halloween. Uh, so I'm going to do a, a kind of decoration uh, where I'm going to decorate uh, my, my notes with some pumpkins, uh, which is going to look absolutely fantastic. So it's going to be called decorate here. And uh, let's remove the, the stuff in here. Um, and let's use the editor callback here. So the editor callback takes two um, parameters here. You can get the editor and the markdown view, uh, and able to you're able to access them right away. So uh, let's see now if I do something like the the notice in here, right? Uh, this is not going to run here, so we're not going to be able to see this because we're not actually in an editor, right? Uh, so I'm going to open up. A, uh, a an, an another note here. Let's let's use, let's, yeah, well, let's use this one. So as you see, uh, we have a few pumpkins here already, but I absolutely love pumpkins. We're gonna add a few more. So what I can do here, I, I can access my document, uh, my notes uh, contents directly from in here. So if I hit uh, get value here, I'm actually gonna get the entire contents of uh, of the note. So I can store that in a, vari a variable here, for example. And so I'm actually going to uh, copy paste a regular expression here, which is a way for me to match um, a certain part of the document. Um, so let's see if I can add that here. It's going to look something like that. And next, I'm going to be is passing it a callback. So what I'm will be doing here, let me just explain it real quick. So I'm getting the value of the, I'm getting a, a string value uh, that contains my entire note. 
And in that note, I want to replace everything that every line that starts with a hashtag. And I want to uh, replace by adding a pumpkin at the end. So I'm going to look at every match. Uh, and for every match, I want to uh, add a little pumpkin. Just going to get, get the pumpkin from my, my, uh, my little stash of pumpkins here in the back. So what this is gonna do is that it's gonna look for all uh, basically headings in my document and it's gonna add a pumpkin to every match and replace that. Very cool. So the next thing we need to do is that we need to update the, uh, the value of, of the editor. So I can do that with the set value instead, pass the updated contents that we, we, uh, we made. So, uh, Let's see now if we can run this. So now I'm actually in an editor. And let's see if we can find the decorate command. Here it is. So if I hit that, we're going to be adding a few pumpkins to our headings. Very cool. So that's something that you can do with an editor callback. So you can do this with a regular callback. Uh, nothing's stopping you. It's just a helpful way to, uh, it because it actually gives you access to the, the editor instance and the view right away. So you don't actually have to get them yourself. Um, and it will only run uh, when you're actually inside of an editor. So I'm just going to see if um, we have any questions so far. Yeah, uh, so we will be talking about Templator uh, in, in the second half of this session. So stay, stay put, uh, and uh, we will have some templating goodness for you. Awesome. So uh, let's see what we have. Um, this is basically uh, the two ways of you know, triggering actions inside your plugin. And we do have some other ways of, of uh, accepting user input as well, such as modals, for example. A modal is a different way of uh, where, where you can get a basically a dialogue and you accept user input from there. Uh, we won't uh, cover modals today, but we will in a future session. So uh, feel free to tune in later. This has kind of been a, uh, a starting point for how to add commands and, and ribbon actions to your plugin. And uh, I hope that you uh, will experiment and add some of your own. And yeah, uh, really cool that you, you wanted to join us. Um, I will be taking a short break. Uh, and once I'm back, I'm going to be bringing Sam Morrison with me, who's going to be talking about the Templator plugin. Very cool. So uh, don't go anywhere unless you're filling up on, on coffee, water, or whatever you may have. Awesome. See you in a bit. <laughs>